<laughs> like a dream come true as a business owner to see that about 900 clients a month. The biggest downside to search market is co if I'm a lawyer right now and I said, Sam, I need to get more clients. What would be the number one thing that you tell me to do? Give me your secret sauce, man. Welcome back to the Scales of Success podcast. Today, I am joined by Sam Balai. I apologize if I'm butchering that, Sam. Sam is the owner and founder of four law firms, My Legal Academy. Today, we're going to be talking about all things client acquisition, lead generation, automation. Welcome, Sam. We've been trying to do this for a while, playing tag. I'm glad you finally made it. Appreciate, it, appreciate you, Ryan. Uh, I've been following you for at least seven, eight years from different ventures. It was always SEO related and content and marketing related. So I'm glad to be able to finally connect. Yeah, me too. And I've been seeing a lot of your stuff over the past couple of years as well. I have a very similar program to my legal academy, but for agencies. You know, I'm an agency owner. I teach the same systems and processes that we use, similar to, I'm sure, what you do with yours. So tell me a little bit about the law firms and your background in law and then what you're currently doing now. Sure. So my journey started 10 or 11 years ago. I started my first law firm. At the time, I basically had to generate clients and I, I don't have a mentor. So I had to, basically had to go browse YouTube and Amazon books and get my hands on as many lead magazines as I possibly could to try to teach myself. I, I think the first kind of field that I kind of went into myself was SEO. That's when I think I found you. Then it was the world of content. Then it was sales funnels. Then it was Google ads. Then Facebook ads and TikTok ads and YouTube ads. And I think in the last four or five years, the focus has been a lot of social media ads, plus a lot of automations, plus a lot of virtual dedicated intakers to send up clients for you. And then just rinse and repeating that system. And now we're about 900 clients a month. No, more actually. We're about 40 clients a day. So it's, yeah, over a thousand clients a month across these four law firms and just all about hyperscale, fast growth and a lot of automations. Love it. And those are, I saw, I, I was just on your LinkedIn. So the four law firms are, I saw Lemon Law. What are the four law firms, the practice areas? I just don't like talking about the specific ones, but yeah, the four different writing variety types. Okay, fair enough. So what specifically are you doing to generate that many leads and clients? Is it mainly social ads? Yeah, a lot of social ads, a lot of media buying, essentially. So that's been kind of like the core focus. I would say 80%, 90% of our, of our attention are what we do on a daily basis is on that. But at the same time, we also, we believe in long-term assets, you know, building our, our YouTube channels, building our, our website and our content and SEO on the back end so that uh, we basically have both going, one for immediate results, you know, something to control and scale quickly, but at the same time, building these long-term kind of assets. So is that what you teach and coach inside of my legal academy too? Talk to me about like the acquisition framework that you guys teach and coach. Yeah, it's essentially on the front end for traffic. Yeah, it, it is social uh, media ads for the most part. But I always say when people join our program, I always try to get the easy ones out of the way, like the Google ads and the Google essay. I'm like, if you're not already doing that, you got to be doing that. Sure. For that, um, usually make referrals to uh, people that we know are good at it, that are reliable, that are honest and transparent. You know, we got, you know, we help them with that kind of department. And then once they get that down, we set up their CRMs for them, which is crucial. A lot of lawyers don't have the back end to be able to keep track of the leads and do the follow-ups. So we set up the foundation of that. Once we get set that up, then we go add new traffic sources on the front end to be able to feed the CRM and the intakers to the set of clients. What, what CRM do you guys install just out of curiosity? We pretty much white label, uh, go high level. Okay. And we already created all the workflows. We already created the onboarding. We already created the support to be able to easily duplicate the, the workflows for lawyers. And we kind of rinse and repeat what works when it comes to automating uh, lead follow-ups and uh, cl client follow-ups as well. Yeah, for sure. I mean, so our agency specializes in search marketing. We're doing significantly more paid social because we do a lot of paid social for ourselves. It works very well. I want to talk more about that because there's some challenges that we faced with lawyers in terms of really getting socialized dialed in. So I want to talk the details about it, but something that we found a lot too, is that a lot of law firms don't have the foundation, right? And they try and hire an agency. They try and do some marketing themselves and marketing usually ends up getting blamed for other issues. Namely, you know, there's a, there's, platforms that are driving phone calls to them. Google Business is driving, maybe Avo's driving. 
you know, they're getting some stuff organically. They're missing phone calls. They're not tracking them. They're just going to their email most of the time, if that, and marketing usually gets blamed for it. So I, something that we've been doing much, much more of is intake and intake coaching consulting and like an overall process review. We really won't sign clients anymore until we've really reviewed their intake process because of the way that our contracts are structured. We can drive 500 phone calls a month all day easy. It's not hard to do that, but closing those and turning those into clients takes um, takes some some systems and some automations, as you said, and some some tracking and some CRMs in the back end. And uh, most law firms don't have that done, so it is very 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 important. So I do want to talk more about social ads. So when you teach and coach social ads inside of your program who's doing the actual media buying or the the for those who don't know what media buying means like the actual setup of the facebook the tiktok ads so our model is it done with you uh, okay. because we find that to be the best model if it's done for you first of all nobody cares as much as the law firm owner uh, so we found is you know you got to be really lucky to find somebody who really cares who cares long term to to stick with the changes, being able to come back after four or five months and say, hey, let's you know let's do this, let's go do, down this route. So our model is where you're involved as a law firm owner, you know what's going on, but you don't necessarily have to be the one to go set up all the intricacies. We have basically uh, crowdsource law firm growth implementers who come in and set up these parts for you. Plus we give you the recipe. Plus we tell you what to expect. Plus we help you set up the tracking so you're involved as a partner I'll probably help you set this up for, uh, got it got it understood okay so just like you said the reason number one why we focus on search marketing is, is is its point of interest right especially when we talk about injury accident you know there's nothing more powerful than ranking first whether it's an ad or organic if you get that first phone call an injury and accident case it's incredibly valuable you're actually dictating what happens to the rest of the market if you get that first phone call because you can control whether or not they actually have a case or not right and also when it comes to working with law firms, lawyers tend to be very busy. Even our highest paying clients sometimes won't answer our emails for two months. <laughs> it just is what it is, right? So trying to get lawyers to do content, right? Whether that's video, whether that's anything written is a challenge, a big time struggle pulling teeth. That's what's great about search marketing is we can take that all off your plate. Written content, we can take off your plate and do it for you. We can manage your website, we can set up your ads really no involvement at all is needed from law firms. The biggest downside to search market is competition and costs. It is extremely expensive if you're in a competitive market, and it's also extremely competitive if you're a smaller law firm trying to get it done yourself or just getting started. It's, it's, you just can't enter the, the search market and you just can't do it. So social, you know, I tell all my clients all the time that the free stuff you should be doing on your own. It doesn't cost anything to, to post on your Instagram and LinkedIn every single day. You should just be doing it, letting people know that you have a law firm. This is what you do. Even if it's bad, just do it. But if you do want to get surgical and have success with Meta or even TikTok, right? The content in the creative is incredibly important, meaning the video assets, the, the, the copy that you write, especially because you go into a platform like Facebook, like TikTok, like Instagram, and it's not a search platform like Google where, where clients are putting themselves saying, I got in a car accident, I got a DUI, I'm going through a divorce, I need an attorney. You are trying to stop people. It's like a mobile billboard. You're trying to stop people and use the limited targeting that these platforms give you to target people that would potentially be in market for a divorce, for an accident, whatever that may be. So the creative and the content is incredibly important. And we've really struggled. And this is my long-winded way of saying how do you get lawyers to actually create the content that's needed to have success on social platforms? Give me your secret sauce, man. You don't. Yeah. <laughs> You're talking about the same problem that you kind of face, we face too. I kind of, uh, I was, I put out a challenge then at, at, where I was replicating these funnels and these cloud generation things for myself. But I'm like, let me go tackle one of the hardest niches, which is PI, personal injury in California. Yeah. But not just that, I want you to follow along with me as I go from scratch you know, building the campaigns and making this possible. And one of the things was, let's go analyze what's working, what's not. So you notice a lot of, you know, using the lawyer as the content. And I remember one, one particular session, we sat there and I said, hey, this is what, you know, the video should be like, go, go record. Some people made it, most people didn't. That was kind of like a grind. Yeah. Like next week, let's try something new. What if we hire the creators that could call out the pain points 
talk about what's the ultimate result that people could be entitled to and give them a call to action. So we, we went, created these using particular platforms. We created it. It took us a couple of days. It took us less than $100, $100 to get it made. No pain, no issues. Put it up, start working. Like, wait a minute. How do we, you don't, you don't have to be the lawyer to create these? And we realized at that point, no, you don't. So for our law firms, you don't necessarily rely on the main lawyer to create the content. If that was the case, I would not be able to mass A-B test, A-B test 40 different creators per week. So yeah. no, we just go find other ways to be creative with our creatives. It's very smart. So when you talk about a funnel, right? I, it, what comes to mind for me is something that's multi-stage. The funnel that we run for ourselves all the time is what we call, or what's known as a VSL funnel, video sales letter, right? Where we run image and video ads on Facebook and Instagram. We run it to a landing page. That's very simple. That says, here's your biggest pain point. So for lawyers, it's, this is the number one reason why you're not generating leads in 2024. And then a button that says opt in to get the video. They give us their name, their email. We capture that. We send it to an automation system. And then on the next page, they just watch a 10 minute video that is just hammering them with pain points over and over again, and then present them a solution. And then the back end call to action is to book a call to potentially become a client or get a free analysis. That's the funnel that we run for our agency, crushes it. It works very well. Now we've done that for some tax and business lawyers, and it's worked really well because we're able to target people with a message, right? Or a problem or a pain point. That's pretty simple. Like if you're, if you're in tax or business, it's, Hey, I can help you do do three things to help you make more money basically, right? People will opt in to watch a video for that. But if we're talking about injury, accident, divorce, you know, practice areas like that, what type of funnels do you run? Or is it just straight up direct response, commercial call us now? So it definitely depends on the practice type for sure. But from what I've seen, for the most part, I would say 70, 80% of it is direct response. Yeah. Direct response to generate the leads and then qualify the leads as they come in uh, is our kind of goal too. But you mentioned, yeah, there are some certain practice types like state planning, business tax, where it requires a little bit more education. You know, there's a lack of inherent, I call it inherent uh, urgency, where you kind of have to educate and create the urgency to give, to give them enough of a reason to move forward. At that point, then yes, that typical funnel that works for agencies would work for that. But yeah, for the most part, direct response and then the, again, the qualification part is also a key, getting really, getting that down really well. And I think people a little mess up on this. There's a lot of good, the best practices that I always try to have them in mind. If you do that successfully, that goes into directly into your CRM. Your intakers are calling the leads right away. You know, texts are being sent right away. Emails are being sent right away. That's what it takes much. So in terms of the, cause that's something that we've seen too, right? Is that the cost per lead is significantly lower off of social platforms like Facebook versus search, right? So if we're doing paid search ads on Google, we're actually working with an LA car accident attorney. Now the leads are coming in around like 1500 to $2,000, but on Facebook, they're coming in around $250, but the quality of the leads on Facebook because of the messaging that we have to use to assume like, Hey, if you've been, you know, hurt, you know, you might be, you might be, or if you've been in a car accident, you know, you might be owed money, something along those lines, right? It tends to bring in people that again, we have to get people off of the bench, right? We have to get people to stop scrolling and pay attention and hope that they're within the statute of limitations, that they're actually impacted by this, but it does tend to generate a lot of craft phone calls, <laughs> right? Um, it just, it is what it is. There's, there's not a whole lot that we can do about it. So it kind of evens out when we track the full life cycle in terms of customer act, like new case or client acquisition costs, it kind of evens out, but the front end cost is just so much more significant on Google versus meta. But you know, like how do you, so are you dealing with that through automations in terms of screening people out or is it a manual human intake call process? to qualify those leads. Cause it can get a little bit overwhelming if you're a smaller law firm and you just have 300 phone calls and you have to sift through, you know, 295 of them to find five qualified ones. Yeah. So I think two parts, one is you're going to need to have hardcore tracking to know from each source, how many leads, how many qualified leads and how many signups for each source. 
And for us, we, we barely even look at the cost per lead. We only, we only look at essentially cost per qualified lead from each source and our cost per acquisition from each source. So that really dictates where we should go invest more in. And a lot of times, as you said, like the front end is kind of misleading where one particular platform could have a lower or higher cost per lead that shows in the platform. Yeah, generating a lower cost per lead, but when you look on the back end, the cost per acquisition is completely different. So ultimately, the ultimate number is a cost position. So we look for that. If not, the cost per qualified lead to determine that. That's first. Second, yes, there is a lot of more sifting that you got to do from these other meta sources and TikTok sources because, right, there's a lack of intent. So for that, again, the qualification questions is key, getting that down. And then second part is having dedicated intakers. And usually we've seen that people that are overseas usually are better at this because they just have more patience. They're more hungry for, you know, making more money versus somebody in the U.S., you know, has expectations, high expectations, to, you know, yeah. people, they want to work less, you know, taking the path of least resistant is like a big, big thing with like American workers versus yeah. people that are hungry. Somebody in South America who is so happy to finally be able to work from home and close clients and make good money and be part of a Slack who's motivating each other. Now they're getting incentives for this and that. And that we've seen it has been a much better model, dedicated virtual intakers. Well, I've been based in Miami, Florida. I'm from Boston. I'm cold-blooded American. You know, I love this country, but as a business owner, you know, it's <laughs> it's really, really, really difficult to find people that economically make sense for the business, I guess is the best way to put it, right? Half of our team is in Columbia. We tested all different parts of the world. You know, different parts of the world have different benefits in terms of different skill sets. We have a, a good sized team in Colombia because it's Eastern time zone and the labor rate is very favorable and everything that you described too, in terms of just hunger and willingness to do certain tasks that a lot of Americans are just probably the best word is a little bit too entitled to do. Unfortunately, it's just kind of where we are as a nation now. Tom's a top, top, top level talent here, but that mid, that mid to lower is, it's tough to find. So do you recommend or work with law firms on outsourcing or finding talent in other countries because it's been it's a bit of a taboo point with a lot of law firms you know when i explain to them how we're set up and structured that we're fully remote that uh i don't believe in offices anymore for agencies because you're basically just you're, you're paying higher overhead for 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 to inflate people's egos and you know we have again people all over the world because it allows me to find the best talent and deliver prices that makes sense to my clients it takes them like explaining for them and there's definitely a level of uncomfort for them is that something that you find do you recommend that l lawyers find people outside or is that something that you find them uncomfortable with yeah there's always limiting beliefs about you know the quality or the pot potential of uh virtual assistance and it really comes to the personality some people are super receptive to it they don't question it they move forward right away within a couple of weeks they're setting up clients they're loving it and then some people are sitting here three months into the program still questioning it yeah. Like, listen, we got the recipe. You just have to be be willing to be open to it. Yeah, there is, for me, kind of like a story that I share is for one of my uh, law firms, we didn't, we had a hard time hiring a, a, a director who kind of manages the entire operations. So we had no choice but to take our top, one of our top intake managers to be the director. And for like almost a year, he was running the entire operation. And it was just like this eight-figure law firm run by a VA so that for me kind of they kind of opened me up to say, hey, no, it's all possible. And not just as, in, as intakers, but as somebody that will pay $150,000 a, a year for to be able to run my law firm for me. Yeah, 100%. I mean, I, I, I think people are people, personally. I don't think it matters where, you, where you're born, what language you speak. I think we're all humans. And I think that for a long time, this country has just presented better opportunities for people. Um, but the internet has really leveled that playing field. And I think we're really starting to see the impact of that. You yeah, know, and, the cult, and the culture is completely different. You know, how yeah. so like in the last couple of months, seeing our Slack all thriving, communicating, sharing people up, but like this is yeah. like like a dream come true as a business owner to see that uh, this ecosystem that's kind of its own organism that's, that exists without you and it's actually growing and it's helping uh, other people are helping each other grow. That I'm sure you experienced, Ryan. It's so beautiful to see and I love that and became friends with some of you overseas just today. Yeah. One of my VAs messaged me and he said, I wanted to thank you. I've been with you for four years. And I'm grateful to you and all this stuff. And I'm like, amazing. God bless you. And I'm like, my goal is to be able to meet you in person for either for me to come visit your country or for you to come to this side. That'd be an amazing goal for us to have. 
Yeah, I, I, I don't even call them VAs anymore for, for context of people don't know. VA stands for virtual assistant. It's uh, a term that I think Tim Ferriss might have even coined it in the four-hour work week yep. two decades ago now. The book that planted a dream seed in my head. Now they're just core parts of our team, man. I mean, like, you know, again, we've we've been borderless in terms of how we've operated for a long time. I've realized that early on as an entrepreneur that uh, getting the economics of a business to work are hard, uh, especially in service-based businesses that require people. And the economics can get underwater very quickly just off one person, one wrong hire. But when you have a, a more open viewpoint to talent from across the world, and I think COVID was what really kind of open that up to the general US market being like, oh, okay, like we can work over Zoom. <laughs> we don't need people in an office. And there's a lot of smart people all across the world. They don't have to be American. There's nothing that says that they do. Sure. So yeah, I mean, I've been on that for a while. Go ahead. Put it advantage, right? For me and Ryan, we were, we had these virtual teams before COVID. So by the time everyone else caught on, we're already ahead of the, that curve. We're yeah. just writing and writing it. And you always have to find those competitive advantage. What are the things that most people are not doing? And maybe aggressive on that just because for the sake of that no one else is doing it. By the time it catches on, we're already moved on to the next thing and doing that. Yeah, 100%. If, uh, if I'm a lawyer right now and I said, Sam, I need to get more clients, what would, what would you tell me to do? What would be the number one thing that you tell me to do? Put your faith in people who have been doing it for the longest. What I've seen, and both me and Ryan have witnessed this, how many people have you seen come and go in the space, in the legal marketing space? Probably yeah. 9 out of 10. Yeah. come and go, right? Uh, a lot of these kind of younger kind of personalities that come in, they either take a course, they think they just know how to do it all, or maybe they find one thing that worked for one client. But what I've seen, the people that have been in it for, for longer than five to 10 years are the people who can uh, walk the talk and actually deliver results. And something I've also been recognizant of is the people that are talkers are talkers, but the people that are doers are doers. So sometimes, you know, the most flamboyant or the most talkative person is not the most successful person in a niche. But if you see somebody who, again, who's been doing it for the longest, who has, who's growing, who's, and who's smart, those are the people to kind of invest in. Don't be afraid to invest money is another crucial thing. You know, don't be stingy with it. The more that you spend, the more you kind of expose yourself to making more money and just do it with the right people. Yeah. I mean, I would just piggyback off that, that it's not even like a cliche agency or consultant pitch that you got to spend money to make money. Like you just happen to operate, unfortunately, in one of the most competitive online verticals. It just, it is what it is. And the internet is one big real estate play. And when it's more competition and there are a lot of firms at the top that are spending to put you out of business, literally like a lot of law firms spend, spend, spend and take a loss on front-end acquisition just so you don't get those leads, especially in the interaction space. Like they're willing to pay. It, it literally becomes a game of how much are you willing to pay per client. So unfortunately, <laughs> yeah, it is. It's 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 a brutally, brutally, brutally competitive game that's driven by like the top 3% of law firms that are just like, we're going to outspend you. <laughs> and guess what, Ryan? Sometimes all three might be losing money. I just don't know it and because they're not tracking it properly. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. 100%. And... You know, just to finish that too, there, there's no shortcuts anymore in online marketing, right? It's mature now. And when you scroll down your Facebook and Instagram feed and see people guaranteeing you 30 MVA cases where you don't pay, like <laughs> your bullshit meter has to yeah. go off, guys. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. It has to go off. Like there's, yeah. there, there's just no way, you know? And the other thing too, which is nuts to me, Sam, is stop signing these crazy contracts guys like you went to law school for a very long time and the amount of sam it's nuts man the amount of clients that i can't close because they're like oh i'm actually locked into a 48 month contract with xyz agency i'm like why would you sign that <laughs> like, well, like what kind of sales pitch were you given and like you you're an expert in contracts law here and you sign this contract like stop signing them guys like it's nuts like you're you're you should own everything. Like you cannot sign away your entire life to an agency. You should own your website. You should own your content. You should own your hosting. Like those are your assets. And just because you're like, it's 2024, stop playing the ignorance card being like, well, I don't know any better. Like you have to know better. Like, like you come to people, they come to people like me and you and they're like, I need help. I'm like, it starts by like, dude, like uh, you have to take over like control of your stuff. Like I can't help you because you signed away. Like I can't even touch your website because you signed it away to a lot to this other agency that's charging 15 grand a month. Like, 
it's it's my. I feel the pain too. It's like hiring a construction company. Says I'll build a house for you. <laughs> I'll just I'll just own it. I'm like what? Are you doing? Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's just exactly what it is. It's exactly what it is. All right, Sam, man, I really appreciate your time. Tell the people the best place to find you and find out more information about you. Sure. So just go to mylegalacademy.com. I'm also just like Ryan, pretty active on YouTube, a Facebook group, we have a free lawyer community. We're pretty much, if you search anywhere for My Legal Academy, you'll have to find me. I fully support Ryan uh, because I know he's playing those super long-term game. He really cares for all those pieces of content that you put out for so many years. It just shows your dedication to what you do. So I appreciate you. Ryan, I'll see you in 10 years and 20 years and 30 years doing the same thing. You're doing Thanks, Sam. I appreciate <laughs> you too, brother. Thanks, man. Take care.